Free market. Free market this, is crazy. This is a role-playing game that comes in a box, like the old D&D games. It looks like a board game. The deal with it is that it plays one kind of game very specifically. Notice the trend here. They all play one kind of game pretty specifically. Which is why you have to learn a lot of different games, so you can play a lot of different things. This is set in a space station in a post-scarcity world. Imagine a world where energy, we have infinite energy. It's Resources. basically a cyberspace, cyberpunk utopia, right, where everything is amazing and the only scarcity is physical room, right? If I die, they just reprint me and put my memories back in. I'm good to go. Right. You can't even can't die. You can't. All you can have is really social, you know, currency. Like people don't like you anymore. That can be a problem, right? So that's sort of a scarcity. And physical space. You live in a little tiny box. It's a space station. It's tight. Now the whole premise of the game is predicated on one question. So with this world and with all this, these resources at your disposal, what did you do today? That is the prompt. And let me tell you, watching people play this game, it goes into a dark place really quick. Yeah, and it's pretty cool because sometimes you play and people tend to start off wacky. I've played games about cannibalism. I've played games about dentistry. I've played games yep. about, you know, cooking plus cannibalism. Food is a very common theme in this game. I want to start a bakery. And think about this, a post-scarcity world. In this world, if I give you a donut, you probably really like me because I gave you a donut, unless you're gluten intolerant. But in this world, if I give you a donut, you can print a donut anytime. In fact, taking the donut is just a pain in the ass. If you give someone a gift and they accept it, you get like a huge boost in this game because who the hell wants gifts, right? And there's actually differences between stuff you made by hand and stuff you just printed out. And it's like, are you really good at printing? Are you really good at making stuff? There's all kinds of things. So this is a game that actually makes you really think about the sort of ramifications of a post-scarcity society and it does it exceedingly well, and weird sci-fi comes out of this game. Right. The other thing about the game is you play it with these multiple decks of cards. Every player has a deck of cards, and it says right on the box how many of each card are in the deck, and you flip them over one at a time to sort of resolve the conflicts, right? It's like, oh, I draw a hazard card, shit. Oh, I drew a you know, genetics card, good, right? I needed that, because I'm using my genetic uh, thing on this test, this conflict, right? Um, and the thing is, you know how many are in there. You can look in the discard piles. You're like, shit, I know there's no more greens in the deck. The next thing I do, it's probably gonna fail miserably, right? So, but I need to finish the deck so I can shuffle it again to, so I can win at something. So I can choose, like, oh, I know I'm gonna fail here, right? Or maybe I'll get people to help in on the next thing I do so I know I don't fail at it. So success and failure are ebb and flow currencies, just like in a lot of good stories. The characters are failing and failing and failing and failing, and then suddenly they succeed at the end, and Bilbo throws, gets the ring, and Gollum doesn't eat him. Or they're, fa they're succeeding and succeeding and succeeding, and then the critical plot twist happens because they ran out of success. It makes that ebb and flow happen every time you play the game. So if I'm going to tell the story of my character here, I'm not going to talk about my strength stat. That's not interesting. And it turns out that that's the only part of my character that is character, that is story, who he knows, what he's done, where he's going, why he fights for what he fights for. That's it. And that whole character sheet, that's it. Yeah, so, you're trying to tell me this is a role-playing game, but what percentage of it has anything to do with role-playing? That percent. And most of that is a picture. Now you've been